Hi there, Joanne O'Leary from Dollface Pottery. Today I'm doing another brush on glazing demo and um, based on some feedback from our brush on glazing cone five six group, it's uh, grown to quite such, such, uh, such a group, um, more than 10,000 members now. Uh, look that up on Facebook, it's brush on glazing cone five six and join us because we have a great community lots of sharers with glaze combos um, for brush on glazing only lots of dippers out there i know but uh you know the brush on glazing community is a patient community as we know because brush on glazing takes so long so today i'm going to be doing a butter dish this is the base and what i've taken the liberty of doing and this is the, the cover so what I've taken the liber liberty of doing with all three pieces today, I'm going to be doing uh, two mugs and this butter dish. I've taken the liberty of um, accentuating the texture with black underglaze, black, jet black underglaze by Amico. And I'm going to be trying some glaze combos with that. So first we're going to, what I'm, the combo that I'm going to do is Mako Birch. That is <clears throat> SW131. Some people have been wanting to, wanting me to share the glaze number, so I will do that if I remember. But it's Mako Birch, and we're going to be putting, let's see my notes, because I have notes made on everything. We've got two coats as the base, and then we'll try deep fire brick over that and and cinnabar mako cinnabar so amico deep fire brick and mako cinnabar i hope uh i'm going to be speaking loudly because i'm competing with the heat pump in this garage i have to have it on because i don't want my glazes to freeze but it is kind of loud in the background so i'll just uh, increase my increase my volume on my voice. So I'm finally over that head cold. If, if some people have watched other videos of mine, I've been grappling with a head cold for a while. So I'm finally over that. So I can speak clearly and not become winded and things like that. So just going ahead with the birch on the base of the butter dish over all of the texture. Now, of course, what I've done prior to this is I've wiped back all of the pieces with a damp sponge earlier today to get rid of any dust particles, you know, because when, when your pieces are laying in the studio for a while, it does get quite dusty in a clay studio, as we know. So, I know some of you experienced potters don't need to be hearing that, but I'm speaking to the masses here beginners and emerging potters so so what I'm using uh, the what really makes the difference in brush on glazing this is a Mako fan brush it's the Mako soft fan CB 604 so it's just size 4 Mako and I, I just find, I use Am, both Amico and Mako fan brushes, and they're just a joy to work with when brushing on glaze. And you'll notice I'm going back over some of the texture because I can see some of the texture, like little pinholes becoming for me, so I'm just going over it. And this is still considered the first coat, although I'm going over it while still wet. Okay, so keep that in mind. So just back and forth, cross hatch. So I'll cross hatch while it's still wet, but I'll also, you know, the majority of time for the first coat, I'm going back and forth horizontally like this, and then I'll change direction for the second coat when it dries. I'll change direction from mostly to this. Okay, so I'm just going around the rims now. I'm not gonna glaze the bottom. This butter dish is for me. Personally, I'm not selling it, so I'm just gonna, gonna glaze the bottom. Just 
taking the lazy man's or lazy woman's way out. <laughs> Okay, first coat done for the base. So that's two times Mako Birch. And the Butter Dish Dome right here. That, I'm going to do the same thing. Mako Birch over the whole thing. Even the texture. And see how it works. I, I really don't know how this is going to work out. So this is going to be a surprise for me. And what I did on the inside of the butter dish, I just put Amoco Mixing Clear on the inside, just, you know, for simplicity. So let's, let's start. I'm just going to put two, a really good base coat. I'll put it down actually, so I don't have to hold it. Your banding wheel is a good friend when you're glazing and when you're building. So for those of you who don't are not familiar with me, uh, my name is Joanne O'Leary. I run and operate Doll Face Pottery. The reason it's called Doll Face Pottery is because my initials, which is J-O-L, when the way I design my initials, it looks like a little girl's head. So when I was trying to come up with a name for my business, I was thinking, what am I going to use? And, you know, I'm, I don't want to go Joanne O'Leary Ceramics or anything like that. You know, I could have, but I just didn't want to. So I looked at my signature. It looks like a little girl's head. And then, you know, I was thinking on dolls. Actually, someone from the from the clay studio said, well, dolls, a doll's head or doll face. And that was it, doll face pottery. So thanks to Brad at the clay studio for helping me with that and it's catchy too like um at markets people say oh you know they send their husband to go get a mug because you know they don't want to miss out getting a mug and they they tell their husband just go look for doll face <laughs> so it's easy to remember which is good so that's the reason i came up with that name so you can so see some pinholing bubbles in the glaze so you know we'll try to rectify that when it dries we'll rub it over with a dry clean finger that usually takes care of it you know I find you know when I'm trying to emphasize texture and I have black underglaze on the texture it kind of acts as a resist so that's probably why it's happening as well so most times i use amico obsidian to uh, accentuate the texture and wipe it back but um I'm getting a bit low on obsidian so i decided to go with the black underglaze and see how it interacted with the mako products so the sides I don't mind about getting the glaze on the backs because I just wipe it off anyway. doing now is just making sure that I'm getting into all the textured grooves and everything. And any any you know thick glazed areas I'll just okay that's considered one coat although I went over it a couple of times while it was still wet. Still considered one coat though. Uh, considered two coats when it completely dries and then you put on another layer so what I'm going to do now is going to use the hair dryer to dry it up a little bit. I'll, and I'll edit that out because you don't need to listen to that. All right, good. 
So that's it. That's the first layer. And we'll use the hair dryer with it. I'll use the hair dryer on the base first. All right, so again with the banding wheel, it's a really good tool as well when you're hair drying. You can just spin it around, spin it around while the hair dryer is going on. By the way, um, the Mako glazes that do not like um, the hair dryer are all the crystal glazes like Night Moth and um, you know, muddy waters, all the crystal, crystalline line stoneware glazes. They don't like the hair dryer. They should dry on its own. But the other glazes that don't have crystals in it, they're fine. I noticed a couple of edges there that I've missed the first time. So that's uh, dry enough now. So I'll go over the opposite direction. Now remember I went back and forth before. Now I'm going the opposite direction. That's called crossed cross hatching. It uh, helps to eliminate brush strokes. Another thing that helps to eliminate brush strokes is of course the type of brush, which, you know, this is, like I said before, the Mako hand brush or a Mako fan brush. And uh, that really makes a difference as well. The other thing that makes a difference is really saturate the brush. See how much like it's running off the brush. And, and then you just Float the brush over the piece instead of like pushing down, you know, and, and creating brush strokes. Going around the rim and dunk it. As soon as it starts to drag, dunk it back into the jar and smother it again. So my two coats of glaze is fairly thick. So it's probably equal to some others, three coats, you know, so that's why typically I only only go with two coats because I'm a heavy-handed type of glazer, which works fine for me. Just barely floating, like just, you know, I could do it with two fingers, just barely dragging the brush across. That's what I do to reduce the brush strokes. Make sure I got my edges this time. Get down low. Use the banding wheel. Make sure you get all the edges. Two coats for the base. Move the bat move the the actual bat. I always glaze on bats because then I don't have to touch my piece. And we'll, we'll glaze the, the top part. Before I do that, I have to hair dry it, so. And this is the, the time when I look for, when it's dry, and I mean powdery dry, this is the time I look for any potential pinholes, like You'll, you can see them. Maybe you can see them up close. So what I'll do is I'll look for the pinholes, take a dry, clean finger, and rub over the place that I think it looks like a pinhole. It's probably you know, could be a pinhole, could not be a pinhole, but just in case it is, I'll rub it over, rub, 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 and then pinhole disappears. Because if you don't do that, um, you know, sometimes, it, well, if you do it, sometimes it doesn't work, but if you don't do it, it definitely won't work. So you'll end up with little pox and pinholes in your texture. It's so important for the dra glaze to be dry so that the dry glaze powder falls into the little pinhole section.
is the first two layers of the Mako Birch, which is SW, which stands for Stoneware Glaze, SW131. This butter dish is from a template, actually, De La Designs. I'll put the link uh, to De La Designs in, in the description for the video. Uh, she has fantastic templates, like lots of templates, mug templates, uh, bowls, you know, sculpting the pumpkin even. She has templates for that, and the butter dish, of course. And she comes out with new templates all the time, and, and it really doesn't take that long to get from the United States to Canada. I think she might live in the northern United States, so it doesn't take long at all to get my order. And... She always includes a little pretty little stamp or something like that. It's just, it's, it's great. Great customer service from De La Designs. So check her out. Okay. So what I'm going to put over the the birch once it dries is I'm going to put Mako's Cinnabar so it's SW119 and on the rose sections I'm going to try a deep fire brick actually which is from Amico so deep fire brick and it is PC59 so wait for that to dry. So at this point, I can pick up the, it's dry enough, I can pick it up. So when I pick it up, see all the glaze that's dripped on the bottom where I'm using a bat? So what I'll do is I'll use some clean water and my sponge. And I'll wipe that back. Always use a clean part of the sponge as you're wiping back. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to put deep fire brick on the rose sections. The wrist joint. Oh, so much better. It's just a life saver. Right. Um, I'm just going to be dabbing this on, so I'll use just a regular fluffy brush. Not sure the brand name of this one. Deep fiber I find smells. Anyway, I'm going to dab on top of the roses the deep fire brick just to see the difference. I don't know if there's going to be difference in the cinnabar and the deep fire brick, but who knows? Let's find out, eh? I'm going to go with the standard, stereotypical Canadian A. <laughs> uh, I'm just dabbing it, as you can see. Anytime, anywhere there's a rose, I'll dab some fire brick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. If it runs down, what odds? This is going to be an experiment. This is Cinnabar. Again, it's SW119 Cinnabar from Mako. So let's see, what will we do with this? We'll just. Uh, around the knob on top so it'll just drip a little bit hopefully but who knows I I, I don't know how this is gonna work out what do you think? Should I leave the just a deep fire brick on the birch here? I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to leave the 
sides with birch and deep, deep fire brick only. Let's see if that adds a bit of interest. So if you're interested in finding, you know, to, in looking at brush on glaze videos or hand building videos, I have a YouTube channel. And of course, that's what you're watching this from. Um, please like my videos and if you would subscribe and hit the bell notification, that certainly helps to support my channel, helps to support me and helps for me to continue with my demos which are free to the viewing public all you have to do is press like and subscribe and you get your videos so if you could do that i'd very much appreciate it just going around the edge now because a little bit drift so i'm just going to move the edge a little bit on the side see what i'm doing right over the side roses so on top the roses that I have the rose sprigs that I have just have deep fire brick on the center and a little bit of birch around with the cinnabar around those and then the the roses on the side has deep fire uh, birch deep fire brick and then cinnabar over so let's see how that changes the dynamic eh? all right <laughs> Top is dry enough to add a couple more coat or one more coat to the top. But I don't know how it's going to react with the birch, so that's why I'm just doing the top because it may run a lot. And so we don't know. So I'm just being cautious here. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> Two coats of Mako Birch. Um, dabs, thick dabs of Amico Deep Fire Brick on top of the roses. And then one coat of Cinnabar, one thick coat down to about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And then some more on the top, say quarter. Nope, hasn't dried yet. It's pulled a bit. Let's dry it a bit. Okay. So I'm just gonna put some thick cinnabar around the edges. I don't even think I'm gonna go two coats. I'm gonna put it really thick. See how that interacts as well. Why use two coats if you only need one, you know what I mean? So, just to see. It's my own personal dish, so not for resale. I don't have to be so precise. See how the banding wheel works very well when you're brushing? It's just done. Done like dinner. All right, done. Okay. That's the first piece. I'll do another mug that someone had requested uh, two times honey flux with um, chum plum and another item, but uh, I don't have chum plum, so they just said um, you know two other glazes with the two bit two times honey flux. So that's what I'll do next. So in inside this is also uh, Amico mixing clear poured and just then brushed to get the access out. The excess glaze out, I should say. Okay, so two times honey flux. Where are ya? Right here. Let's 
do this. Honey flux I find have a lot of oolites into the guys, but it doesn't show up in the glaze fire, so in my experience. I haven't used much of Honey Flux, but I have used some. This is just a test piece because the base uh, came away from, my base came away from the walls of the mug, so it's because I, I know what I did, I know what happened. I used a heat gun to, I was impatient and used a heat gun to dry the base and the drying drawing differences between the walls and the base then caused it to pull away. So we have to be very patient. Just a reminder, patience is a virtue and certainly true in pottery, isn't it? So I started pottery uh, in 2017. I threw a course at our local Newfoundland and Labrador Craft Council. They, off, they have a clay studio as part of their craft council service and I did an introductory pottery course there and I just fell in love. I haven't looked back since. And then I took a course from, I went to Italy with a friend and went to La Meridiana in Certaldo, Italy. They offer lodging when you register for a one-week workshop from world-renowned ceramic artists. They, you uh, register, pay your fee, and what's included is the lodging and a daily three-course meal. Lunch, a welcome, a welcome supper. They welcome the whole class with a welcome supper. You know, Italian food, like what can I say? So what I'm doing here, to, in order to do the bottom, I should have done the bottom first, but I didn't. So this is honey flux, going over the texture. I didn't highlight the texture on honey flux because I don't think it would, the dark highlights would work well with honey flux. Always check under your handle. Sometimes you miss the, the curvature in the handle. So it's always good to turn the mug upside down, check underneath, make sure you got everything. This is not going to be functional anyway, it's just going to be a test piece. But, um, you know, it still could work, but it could be like a future pen holder or something because we're the base came away from the walls. It's not really functional for hot liquids, but I'm just using it as a test piece. And where I have the glaze combo on video, then I have it for future use. And of course you have then, then a record of the glaze combos as well. All right, hair drying time. Getting down to the bottom of my honey flux. up and down this time because the cross hatching thing
lumps in this honey flux. See what happens. Most likely it may melt, but you know, who knows? It's an experiment. It's all an experiment. It's the fun part. The unknown is always the fun part, isn't it? You never know what you're going to get. Like a box of chocolates. You just never know what you're going to get until you open that kiln. My best impersonation of Forrest Gump. And then what I'm going to do on with the honey flux I'm going to try a little bit of deep fire brick by Amico PC59. I'm going to try some textured turquoise PC25 and a few dabs of ancient copper. See how that interacts with the honey flux, which is PC56. So we'll wait for that to dry. Um, then we'll add those three. And what I'll do is I'll just add, you know, sloshes in different places of the, these three glazes, okay? Let's do this. This one wasn't hard to open actually. So this is textured turquoise I'm doing first. So let's try to do this just a at the start, at the top of the start of the shoulder of the mug. Okay. Actually, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my hand inside the mug, clean hand, and go around that way. It's a bit more controlled. So just at the top of the shoulder of the mug, so we don't have to spoil that one. Let's try deep fire brick. Oh, deep fire brick stinks. Sometimes it's old. So let's pop the wine. So what I'm doing is I'm just... So welcome back. I ran out of uh, phone space, a space on my phone. So um, what I did with the honey flux is two times honey flux and then I added textured, tur textured turquoise by Amico around this section here, then deep fire brick around this section, and then I tried some ancient copper just near the rim. So this mug is a second because the base came away, like I said, from the, the wall of the mug, but it's just a test tile, really, a glorified test tile. So let's see how that works in the glaze fire. Um, wish us luck. Anyway, the glaze firing should happen within the next couple of weeks, and I will post the results and attach it to the description and comments in this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>